unexpected. We just cut our meals in half. We were constantly giving. And at the church, she was the one, as you all heard about Kitty's uh, promise, she, she instilled that upon us. So today I'm going to be reading from Second Corinthians. Um, and this is just the basic, the foundation of the, of the giving part. You'll get some better lines here from some of my colleagues. Uh, it's starting off in Second uh, Corinthians 8. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy, their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And what we learned in our uh, disciple class was basically the ministering is just what we did yesterday, what we do at this church every day, and what God was saying and what they were capturing here in the scripture is that it doesn't matter where you're at if you give. It comes back to you. It spreads. Look, look at how much joy and good we spread yesterday. And that's the history of this church. Look how many babies we saved last year. That's the history of this church. It's giving. And when our family, when Mary and I uh, tithe, just for example, we got a refund last, last month from an uh, insurance company. And so that refund went we did the 10% right off the top, even though that was money that we had already received and already tithed on, and then it came back. And so you think, well, wait a minute, we already gave once here on this, but no, it came back to us and we gave back. And instantly we had yes. success for that. Look at how many people we had yesterday. So it goes right with Linda stole my thunder, but that's exactly what I think a whole bunch of us thought of yesterday. Here we were. We ran out of turkey, we're, we're doing so much good, so everybody set things up, and then all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> what is it, two loaves, no, five, five loaves and two fish turned into a 20-pound turkey for us yesterday. So that's what giving is all about, that's what living for baby is all about, and I'm just so pleased to be part of this church. Thank you very much, and who's next? Mark, are you going to take over? All right, Mark. Thank, thank you, Rick, and I, I also want to thank uh, Living Faith um, for, for yesterday. Um, we had 49 people. Now, on an average Sunday morning, we have 80. That means more than half yes. of you all were here helping yes. out. Yeah. 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 Helping out, the good. You know, though, um, you know, we had faithful people driving. Uh, I think we had uh, five cars with. 10 people in them total. We had, um, and the rest were, you know, preparing food, deboning turkey. And so I really just thank everybody for it. Um, you know, Pastor asked me to, to take the next group of uh, scriptures after um, what Rick talked about. And so I'm going to go ahead um, in verse 6 of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, it says, Accordingly, we urge Timothy that he had started, as he had started, should complete among you this act of grace. And he's talking about the giving. Um, but as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace. You know, here, here at Living Faith, you know, has a list of, of, of the different virtues that we practice here. And, and you know, we're, we're good at practicing those. But also, though, we need to practice those in our faith, in, in our giving, in our reaching out to, that, to our community. And so that's what Paul is saying, saying, you know what? You started this. Continue on. And that's my encouragement to Living Faith. You know, we had a very successful day yesterday, but we got to continue on. You know, are we going to do this again next year? Probably, but uh, we also need to continue to do it throughout the year with this grace, with Amen. this giving. That's why we have, you know, once a month, 
we open our pantry and our closing closet um, and continue in that grace. And it is the generosity of living faith that made that available. And so I really, really appreciate all that everybody has done. Verse 7 says, I'm sorry, um, verse 8, I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love is also genuine. See, when, when people come in and see us reaching out to the community, we had, we had a, a council member come and uh, some of her staff helped us. And so we were able to show that councilwoman our earnestness, our love for others. And, you know, love is not just a, a word we say here on Sunday morning because we're Christians, but love is, is what we do. Um, you know, you look at 1 Corinthians 13, they call it the uh, love chapter, and it lists what love is. And you know what? None of those words are feeling. They're all action words. And so love isn't how we feel, contrary to what a lot of people in our society believe, but it's what we do. And so as we you know, reach out and we help other people, um, both within the congregation as well as within the, the broader community, we are showing our love uh, for those around us and, and those who are hurting. Verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that by his poverty you might become rich. Amen. Jesus, you know, he was God. He had everything. Everything belonged to him. But what did he do? We're going to celebrate what he did, the start of his work, um, next month, right? Christmas. Christmas is a month away. And Jesus... He was born. He humbled himself. He set aside his godly attribute, one, one scripture says. And then he came and he lived on this earth and then um, was sacrificed on the cross. Why? That's as an example to us. You know, we need to humble ourselves. We need to serve others. And, and, and that's what we did yesterday. And that's why I, I feel so blessed to be a part of this church that is reaching out to the community. Um, you know, there's a lot of hungry and there's a lot of hurting people out there. Amen. Amen. And, and you, know, you know, what we did yesterday was a start because certainly um, there, there's a lot of people that, you know, it's a meal for a day, right? Those living under the bridges, they got a meal for the day, but what about the rest of the year? Yeah. And, you know, obviously there's only so much we can do, but we need to do what we can do and pray that others will step up for that. Amen. Amen. Jesus is our example. Yes. And we followed that example yesterday, and we need to continue to follow that example. Amen. 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 Yes. <laughs> Some of the translations I've not read before, and I thought they were they were pretty nice, uh, uh, real simple terms. Um, but it's great to compare all the different uh, translations of the, of the word. So Second uh, Corinthians eight uh, ten through fifteen. This is what I think you should do. This is from the EG English Bible. This is what I think you should do. Last year, you were the first people to give money, and you really wanted to do that. So the best thing for you to do is to finish what you started to do. Now finish the work. When you started, you wanted very much to do it. 
And now you should want just as much to finish it. You should give what you're able to give. If you really want to give, then God will accept your gift. And God does not want you to give more than you're able to give. He'll be happy about what you give. So, he's speaking, my purpose is not to bring trouble to you. You should not have pain while other people have plenty. Instead, both you and they should have enough. At this time, you yourselves have plenty. So you're able to give those people who do not have enough. Now one day things may change. They may have plenty and you may not have enough. Then they can give money to help you. And that way you will, have, you will all have enough when you need it. It says this in the Bible, the person who picked up a lot did not have too much. And the person who picked up a small amount also had enough. And that uh, he, compa he compares uh, this, this commentator, he compares this to uh, the Israelites in Exodus 16, 18. When the Israelite people were in the wilderness, God gave them manna for their food. They had to go out and pick up the manna each day. Each family had enough for them to eat that day. So God always gave them the, just the right amount. Yes, yes. Okay. That's how we should go. Um, I always get the right amount. It's wonderful. Amen. It's wonderful. So here's another. Uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I gotta read this. This also this uh, translation. I think this is, this guy's even even. I uh, think he's a hippie or something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, come, it's from the Message Bible. It says, so here's what I think. The best thing you can do right now is to finish what you started last year and not let those good intentions grow stale. Your heart's been in the right place all along. You've got what it takes to finish it up, so go to it. Once the commitment is clear, you do what you can, not what you can't. Now the heart regulates the hands. That's the key. We, we take these things through our ears and our brain, goes to our hearts, and then we put them to practice with our hands and with our feet. Um, this isn't so others can take it easy while you sweat it out. <laughs> no, you're shoulder to shoulder with them all the way. Your surplus matching their deficit. Their surplus matching your deficit. In the end, you come out even. Isn't that great? Amen. God has it all planned out. Amen. It's all equal. Yep. It all comes out even in the end, whether you have a lot or you have a little. You know, this, yeah. this is a great thing that I realized from reading this, this, this uh, scripture. So as it is written, nothing left over to the one with the most, and nothing lacking to the one with the least. Amen. 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 So, so to give, uh, give some more uh, explanation to the, uh, I'm, I'm going to key in on, on verse 15. It says, you have to share the resources. The goal for us is to share the resources to meet the needs of the church and to, and to share the gospel. So uh, we tie, we keep this building going, we keep ourselves going, we keep everything. And this, this building is one huge witness. Mm -hmm. You know? And so that's why we tie, so that we can give thanks to God, so we can witness and, and show the world what life should be like. Um, it says uh, fairness. The goal is to maintain fairness for those who have much giving, much giving to those who have little. So again, it evens out. It evens out. So uh, it's our obligation to be charitable. It's 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 an obligation to care for one another. We it, it creates a sense of community. It fosters a sense of community and brotherhood between us. I mean, a lot of people. I I. I got closer to the drivers, uh, the, the passengers I had yesterday, just because of what we were doing, delivering food. We talked and got to know each other, and uh, we laughed and got lost. And, and, uh, <laughs> but it, it was a team effort, and when you're working together like that, it builds brotherhood. It's great. Yeah. You know? Amen. So the spiritual truth, it embraces the deep spiritual truth that we are all part of one body. Amen. 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 So, again, uh, a little bit more explanation that uh, 
I saw is 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 in Matthew uh, the great the great commission Matthew twenty eight nineteen to twenty is uh, go out make disciples baptize and teach. It didn't say sit back and chill. You know we've been given we have been given the Holy Spirit so we can give the message of Christ to witness. So we're rich with His power and truth, so we can spread the wealth telling others about Jesus. See, Amen. We're rich. Yes. We're rich. So, well, if we have a lot, we give to those who don't have a lot. And we have the Holy Spirit, which is a trillion dollars there, worth even more. We give it to the people around us and tell people about Jesus. And that's, that's the treasure that we share. You know? Amen. So, let's see. It's so hard there. So, um, <clears throat> we should pray. We should pray every day about these things and about our giving. Um, we should give according to our ability, ensuring that no one is burdened while others lack. We should uh, be grace, uh, uh, grateful. We should acknowledge that everything you have comes from God and is a gift to be shared. Yes. That's what really brought it home to me. And uh, the generous. We should ask God to transform our heart to be open and willing to give freely. Not out of obligation, not out of, ah, man, I gotta give money. No. We should give it because we are willing to give it and give it freely. And pray that uh, your giving will directly address the needs of those around us. Amen. And that's what we did yesterday, right? Yes. And Dave, Amen. And it, all these people were, were affected, uh, given uh, things that they needed, you know. So, <clears throat> this truth about the time, uh, uh, this is what brought it home for me. Uh, is it rent? No. Is it uh, admission to get into the church? <laughs> yeah, but you tie it at the door. Right? Uh, or is it a tip jar for the pastor? You know, is, it a tip jar for the, <laughs> is that the tithe? No. The tithe is a is a portion. Is it is um, it's our way of giving thanks to our God. It's the only. Uh, it's the only thing that we have that we can, that, that we can, the way we can express our thankfulness for Him, as it tra it, it, it will transform our hearts to be willing and free to give. Amen. Amen. That's what tithing does. Amen. You know? Amen. Besides all the other million things it does. That's right. So in our prayer, um, I have a prayer. I, I'm going to read it to you because I think it's a good prayer, but. Let's pray and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your provision and abundance. Help me to be steward, be a steward of all that you have entrusted to me, giving generously to those in need, so that just as the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little, that there may be equality and balance in our sharing and bring glory to your name. Amen. 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 Thanks for that warm introduction, Leonard. We know you. We know who you are. Okay. Uh, I'm probably going to walk into the other folks. I don't know if, any, if everybody heard about it. At the small church this morning, being as tall as I am, I, I walked into that cutoff post and. and oh no. Dr. Alex took a look at it. Dr. Lisa took a look at it. Dr. Rick took a look at it. Matty Bob took a look at it and I said, I should be able to stand up here for five minutes. And then Leonard said, lovingly, I see you're not quite ready, as usual, so I'm going to talk a little longer, and so if you go a little shorter, or maybe he said maybe something about being shorter. Anyway, here we go. Um, <clears throat> Pastor said this morning that uh, being as I got derailed, he was going to give me a, a little bit of slack and let me talk about my testimony um, and, and weave the scripture into that so we'll see how I do but uh, briefly my testimony um, has, has a foundation where I where I finally really came to the Lord and uh, it wasn't until I, I went through a great deal of difficulty and, and heartache and, and here here is here it is in capsule form and uh, 
1974, the 14th of January, was my first day at the uh, police academy. And in July, as a rookie cop, uh, I had a call that there was a man with a gun threatening a woman. And uh, it was really the most dangerous thing I had done uh, to date. And so when I got to this apartment complex, I snuck up on the building. I thought I went from a tree to a, another tree and, and finally got in there. And, and uh, just before I got out of the squad car, in those days we didn't have walkie talkies. And, and the dispatcher said, hey, uh, 306, stand by for uh, the second officer because this guy is, is really, uh, as they would say in Spanish, my Spanish is limited. Malo Gato, he's a bad cat. Malo. So, um, <laughs> I waited for the second unit, and when he got there, he said, you know, this, this cat is, is worse than they thought, so they're going to send us a dog. I said, well, a dog sounds like a good idea, <laughs> a rookie cop, you know, and uh, so the dog unit gets there, and, and uh, we sneak up on the, on the uh, door, and one of us checked it, and it was, it was unlocked. So the plan was, throw the door open, let the dog in, and see who wins, <laughs> and so the dog won. And no shots were fired. But uh, as, as we're sitting there getting ready to take this guy downtown, he said, um, who's the first officer on the scene? And I looked at the sergeant and he said, so I said, that, that was me. He said, well, come here, young man. And I walked over there and he, he's a big rascal, about mark size. And, uh, but he didn't have that pleasant Christ-like image. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, I'm not a religious man by any stretch of the imagination, I don't even believe in God, but I'll have to use the word supernatural, something supernatural happened here today. And so he's, he's got my attention and he said, uh, as you snuck up on the building from tree to tree, he said, three times I had you in the sights of that pistol over there. Of course, he, he's handcuffed on the bed, he, he didn't get the point of anything anymore. And he said, I tried to shoot you three separate times. And I know this gun is operational, I shot it four or five days ago and it was worked like a champ. It was a 44 long colt. When I related the story to my brother Rick, he said, well, I'm glad it didn't go off. <laughs> yes. We'll leave it at that. Amen. Anyway, uh, so he said, I felt like what I'll have to call a supernatural presence each time I tried to shoot you. And if you know anything about a revolver, when you, when you pull the hammer back, you know, the cylinder turns, but if you can't pull the hammer back, the cylinder isn't going to turn. Whether you're double action or single action, you can't fire it. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that, of course, at the time. I mean, I knew that because they taught us that in the academy, but I had no idea what had happened. So I finished my shift and I went home to my lovely, uh, then pregnant wife of our firstborn son, Joshua. Of course, we didn't know it was going to be a boy. But, um, <clears throat> when I related this story. It was tough, but it stayed with me all, all these years. And uh, got through it and we prayed about it and thank God that uh, I got to go, go home, come home that day. So fast forward to uh, 1988 and I went to work that day and when I got home, uh, the house was empty, my three children were gone along with my wife, who, by the way, I did not love as Christ loved the church, church, which is what I was charged to do. So she had, she had good reason, I'm sure, accordingly, according to what this answer book, which I left my pastor has to say about marriage. So you young married folks and you older married folks, you know, continue to love your wife as, as Christ loved the church and maybe you'll save some of the lumps like I've taken in my, <laughs> in my day. So anyway, um, that Sunday after they left, I, I was trying to get my act together and uh, a friend of mine, or a dear friend, had rescued me a couple days earlier because I was just gonna lay in bed and die. And on the third day, uh, he knocked on the door and said, come out, come out wherever you are. And uh, the Lord had sent him. And um, I was so dehydrated that the doctor I ended up going to later that day said, I probably wouldn't have made it much longer, but that's, that's another chapter in, in the same old book. Anyway, um, I lost my spot. So that, 
Saturday night before church on Sunday, I prayed. I said, God, I, I need something to hang on to, something I can sink my teeth into because clearly I was, I was heartbroken. They even took the dog. And, and uh, we didn't have a goldfish. I was I was pretty much by myself. <laughs> but I did have an opportunity, uh, unencumbered, to to spend some time in the book, and that that reassured me that I was going to be all right. But I still I prayed for God to give me a little something extra because I was I was pretty empty. And so I, I went to church expecting something, but not what happened. And so I, I had a uh, kinder, uh, kindergarten. I had a uh, Bible study before church with uh, Carl Mintz, the, the pastor. And it was actually a Baptist church that the pastor always refers to every once in a while. And um, what, what had happened during the class, um, somebody came to the door and interrupted the class. And so this, this gentleman sitting across from me, who I knew his name, but I didn't really know much about him. He was an itinerant preacher, which I understood. He, he would preach when somebody was sick or somebody was in a car wreck or whatever in North and South Carolina. He was a handsome young man. And uh, he leaned over and said, right after class, I got to tell you something God just told me. I said, okay, and I couldn't imagine what it was. And I didn't even think about what I had prayed about the night before, but he said, um, <clears throat> so it's 1974, and you're a rookie cop. So far, so good. And he said, um, you answered a call of a man with a gun threatening a woman. And I said, yes, I did. And he said, um, did you ever wonder how it was that the, the suspect couldn't shoot you? when he tried to shoot you three times. I'm thinking, where did he get all this information? Because Rick knew about it, Bob knew about it, my wife knew about it, and the guys I was working with, but you know, it wasn't something we, we carried on much conversation about. And I said, you know, as Paul Harvey would say, I would like to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> and so he said, well, <clears throat> it so happens that your guardian angel, who stood about nine feet tall every time that suspect went to shoot you, he grabbed the top of that revolver and with a nine foot guardian angel hanging on to a revolver, no man alive, living or dead, I might say, could pull the trigger. So each time he tried to shoot me, my guardian angel stopped. Amen. 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 Yes. That's, that's a generous guy. Right there. Yeah. Especially when you consider I wasn't, I wasn't really serving him as I needed to be at the time. So, my second example of a, of a generous God is sitting among us, Mr. Richard Welch, here on the back row with his lovely daughter, Elaine. And uh, first of all, I'd like to wish Richard a happy 97th birthday today. <laughs> this is the only man I ever heard of in my life other than the rich young ruler in the scripture that, that actually listened to God when he said, sell all you have give the rest away and, and follow me. And he did that in about 1974, was it Richard? 73. 73, about the same time I got in trouble out in Tucson. <laughs> anyway, um, I am just so proud to have him in my life. He's, he's uh, one of my mentors, he's my oldest mentor. And um, he, what, he, what he did was uh, he was praying one morning and I'm not sure, and I'm not going to steal all this testimony because the pastor said we're going to have him give it to us one day. But uh, the Lord told him to sell what he had and give the rest away, and, and uh, that's exactly what he did. He spent his entire life, him and his wife, Muriel, and his children, six kids, uh, traveling around the world. They were in um, Europe, and uh, I forget all the countries. His wife went 19 years, I believe, to Romania. And of course, he was involved in all that and, and uh, heading the household and helped raise some other children in the family. And like I said, I'm not going to steal his thunder because I might get struck by lightning. But uh, <laughs> he's, he's really um, a strong witness for the Lord. And uh, he's the opposite side of the coin from the movie that we see uh, every year this time. Uh, on most television stations, the story of Scrooge. So I find myself somewhere in between, <laughs> and I'm trying to work toward the Welch end of the deal. But uh, he is he is a prime example of generosity in, in the flesh, and and that his days may be long on the earth. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, an answer to many many prayers, and and uh, he's he's got a big part of my heart, along with that. 
Guy Richard that showed up again today and surprised everybody. Wow. That's an early Christmas present. Right? Another prime example of a generous God. Amen. Well, the only thing I'm forgetting uh, is who's next, Pastor? <laughs> Alex Copeland. Mr. Alex Copeland. The doctor that took a look at my point of the book. Big Bible, <laughs> so that I can read the words. And as you get older, your eyesight starts to dim, and uh, so uh, make sure I'm reading the correct words. <clears throat> I'm going to start out just a little bit different here. Every time, I apologize. You're correct. Yes. Um, I'm going to start out a little bit different here. Every time I preach, I always try to put a song in there. Uh, because the Lord put a song in my mouth, so it's our job to go ahead and sing it. I'm not singing today, aren't you? <laughs> this song has been in my head over and over and over and over and over again, and I'm positive my wife is tired of hearing it. But the song is, I needed your grace more than I thought I ever would. You forgave more than I thought you ever could. I was stronger in my head the truth is, I need your grace. Amen. How many of us here stand in the need of grace? Amen. Amen. We are a rich people here at Living Faith Church. We are. Yeah. There are some people outside these walls that are in the need of grace. Yes. I could go on, but I'm going to scream my scripture. Um, when I first got this scripture, I was like, ah, that's not sexy at all. <laughs> and I start reading it, and you start breaking apart the nuts and bolts like Pastor taught us in discipleship, and we find out there is a full-blown message in this in the last three script, last four scriptures of this chapter. Amen. It reads, make sure I'm in the right one. And we sent them, and we sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proven diligent in many things. But now, much more diligent upon great confidence which I have in you. <laughs> Layman's terms, he's giving a resume. In Layman's terms, he's talking about uh, a reputation. When I was a child, before I was allowed to leave the house, my parents would say, and I'm going to give an old address so you can't find me. <laughs> when you leave this house at 733 South 101st East Avenue, you are a representative of this house. You will not behave in a way that shows that you do not have any home training. You will behave in a way that is a reflection of who we are and what we stand for. Amen. How many of you all got that message before you left the house? <laughs> How many of you got the message before you walked in the store? Keep your hands to yourself. Don't yeah. touch anything. Yeah. Because if you touch something, you break it. I got to buy it. Yeah. There's a reputation that your family has. Living faith has a reputation that we must uphold. And that reputation it was started by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The word says, then goes on to talk about someone that they had dealings with, which was Titus. He had great faith in Titus. He was a, what do you say? He, uh, a moment. He is my partner and fellow helper. We are partners and fellow helpers. And it says, uh, wherefore show you to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. God is faithful. He is always faithful in the little things and he is faithful in the big things. <coughs> Sometimes I find out that it's the little things that mean more to me than the big things. Now, my wife and I, we tithe all the time. Uh, I'm <coughs> almost to a point where every time I'm about to tithe, I think about Cain and Abel. And I want to get my first fruit. <laughs> I, 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 don't, 
there's always something tragic that happens when you're not giving your first fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's been times, I'm not going to lie, that I've forgotten. And I go, oh, Lord, I didn't give my first fruit. But you know my heart. You know that that's the first thing on my mind. I want to make sure that I do right by you. Because he's given us everything. Yes. He gave everything. Like Pastor says, he bankrupt heaven. God bankrupt heaven to ensure that you had an opportunity to come see him. And if he's giving that much, he gave me 100% of what I got. He's asking for me to be obedient to give just 10%. That's just the tithe. And then some more as an offering to show God, no matter what, I trust in you completely. Amen. Amen. I need more grace. I need to be more of a fountain than a drain. And sometimes we find ourselves in this position where we say, I can't do it today. That's okay. That's okay. I'm going to give you a quick story. This is something that I've told you probably before, and I've told our uh, men's group. There was a time when I was invited to some church on the south side. I don't remember the church, but what happened to me was very impactful. I went there on an empty tank. I had $10, two fives in my pocket. It came time to give an offering. I said, okay, fine, I'll give an offering. I go up, I give $5, I'll run to the store, put $5 in the tank, make it home, no big deal. Now what you don't know is, I was about a day late on my rent. It's gonna be another seven days before I got paid. And I'm like, God, I have all these bills. <clears throat> In my head, I heard, give that other five. I come on, man. I, I, I said, all right, no, I'm not going to do it. I walked out of the church, said hello, hello, goodbyes to everybody, walked down the slope. I was on the side of the church. It was almost like someone said, give that $5. <laughs> and I was like, fine, I'll give it. I don't like getting yelled at. And so I, I gave the $5. I said, God, this is all you. If I'm going to make it home, it's all you. I have no resources. This is all you. I made it home. I never, ever, ever checked my mail. You can ask my wife. It's rare. But I checked my mail that Sunday morning, or the, at, right after church. In there was the full amount for my rent. And a little bit more over for my, for my debt. Now, I do not tell you this to say that you can rub God's belly and poof, he's going to give you all of the desires of your heart. That's not what God is. God is faithful whether you do something or not. That's right. God is asking for your obedience. That's it. That's right. He's asking, saying to you, look, I love you. I want you to love me back. That's right. That's all. And so when we give, Tithing. We give when we give our offering, we give of our time, our talents, our treasure. God is faithful to multiply that. One last example. This is something that I had not anticipated. We were we're in the process of purchasing another property, and there was a certain amount that we needed. And so my wife and I we were looking at getting a loan. So we're looking at getting a loan. Well, should we do it? Should we do it? So we said, fine, we're going to go ahead and get the loan. Well, <laughs> two hours before we were supposed to sign the paper, again, what did I do? Something I never do. I checked the mail. <laughs> In the mail was the exact amount that we needed. The exact amount. I said, hey, man, we don't have to go. We don't have to go sign the paper for a loan. God has, but this was something we had not anticipated. There was some kind of legal thing that happened that gave us this extra extra money. We are so thankful. We are so thankful because God is faithful in the little things. Even if God was not faithful to bless me anymore from this day forward, Him saving my soul, giving me opportunity to go to heaven, is more than enough. Amen. I say again, I need more grace. Amen. More grace than I thought I ever would. You forgave more than I thought you ever could. 
again, strong-headed. I thought in my head I was stronger. But the truth is, we need your grace. Amen. Brother Michael? Yes. This is Brother Michael. Let's give him a hand. chapter 9, verse 1 through 9. This is where Paul is writing to the Corinthians, encouraging generosity. So 1 through 5 here, I'll read first. Um, There's no need for me to write to you about the service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that boasting, that our boasting about your, you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me to find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as as one grudgingly given. So after I read those first five verses, I didn't really understand the context. And I I was also questioning what is this gift that he's talking about. So I did some research. and um, So Paul's writing this letter to urge Christians in, in the Corinthian church to follow through on their generous gift that was promised. Paul was starting to get concerned the Corinthians' early enthusiasm might have weakened. The generous gift of uh, Paul mentioned was for the suffering Christians in Jerusalem. Uh, Paul sent Titus and two unnamed men ahead, which Brother Alex uh, talked about. One of those was mentioned specifically. Uh, he was a man with a reputation. Um, so they were sent ahead to help the Corinthians prepare. If the church in Corinth had not had anything ready to give, it would have sent a poor message to the Macedonian churches uh, that had given so generously in spite of their own poverty. So, um, you know, one of the things I was reflecting on is, you know, Paul had kind of just talked to the Macedonians about the generosity of the Corinthians and their enthusiasm, and they had already given generously, and now it was kind of time for the Corinthians to do their part, and it would not have looked good if they had showed up the Macedonians that were, you know, lived in poverty and gave so generous. So the next four verses, Paul encourages generosity. This is kind of the, the main part. Verse six, remember this, whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Amen. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And give, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Um, one of the brothers that went before me talked about another translation, and I uh, found it. I found it just by chance. I read uh, out of my NIV version. It called it "grace abounds," and I think that was probably an Old Testament wording. Um, and then in my new NIV translation that I copied and pasted onto this document, it had that word missing, grace abound, it just called abundance or abound. So anyway, just what I found in the different translations. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. So focusing on verses 6 to 9, uh, what does it say about God? What does it say about people and what does it say to me? What it says about God is God rewards people that are generous with what he has given them. And God loves it when we give cheerfully. Yes. Amen. What it says about people, people can miss out on blessings God has for them by not giving. Amen. What it says to me, Michael, everything you have has been provided by God. Yes. One way to give is your tithe and offering. Give back to God with a generous and cheerful heart. 
If Jesus was able to feed five, over 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish, imagine what he can do with your tithe and offering. Amen. God can multiply it and use it for his kingdom purposes far beyond what I could ever do with it. Amen. So I got a little complicated here with... Um, so, so a little recap of what, a summary of what Paul is saying. Christian giving is about the heart of the giver. Giving brings spiritual gains that go far beyond our physical needs. God in his grace is able to provide abundantly so that every believer has all that they need at all times and in all ways to abound in whatever good work God has assigned so some of my personal experience with giving, an example of yesterday serving the community, like yesterday, several of us in this church today uh, prepared food and delivered meals. Some came early to prepare and some stayed late to clean up. But uh, one of the blessings that I got to participate in delivering, and uh, while delivering it opened the door to pray for people. Amen. Uh, so yesterday we were able to pray for a brother um, this uh, this lady that had a brother that had a concussion. We were able to pray for a woman that was grieving the loss of her mother. We were able to pray for a woman suffering from arthritis. We also prayed for a family that had a newborn that was sick, and we prayed for another family's health. That was just uh, some examples of how you know going out there and serving opened the door to pray for others. Amen. Um, so be faithful uh, well, I'm sorry help people when you see a need we are the hands and feet of Jesus and are called to Amen. serve others That's right. so a little bit about tithing here so I'll talk about uh, a method that works for me uh, use a budget to manage finances the priority should be your tithing first remember you're giving back to God what is already his and it should be giving cheerfully from your heart Tithing can be a test of your faith, especially if you're struggling to make ends meet or wondering if you will have enough. Start somewhere, then continue to make it a make tithing a priority. Yeah. Be faithful with every increase you're given. So a little story I want to share about myself. Uh, with my current employer, 22 years, I started in an entry-level position. I had set my sights on a position that I wanted. After about 10 years, 12 years, somewhere around there, I finally got to that level. I said, okay, I made it. I was happy. I was good with that. God had more for me. He had more in store for me. I was later promoted two more times for positions beyond what I thought I could achieve. Wow. And, I, and I would link that to saying that God is faithful to those that are faithful. Right. Amen. I share that to say God has blessed my family along the way with overflow and abundance. I have been blessed far beyond what I could have imagined. God is faithful and better than I deserve. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. And now, go on. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Where's your house? Good morning. 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 Who supplies the seed of the sower and the bread for food will also supply and increase your store of the seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Amen. 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 So when Pastor Mario asked us to say something about generosity, uh, I did struggle with this because I did not prepare, number one. And number two, because I didn't really understand uh, generosity. So uh, here's some things I found about generosity. It says, uh, generosity is the equal, the quality of being kind, understanding, and giving to others, often in the form of gifts, time, and other resources. 
It also says that virtue of being generous or the act of giving to others freely and abundantly. Another word says uh, a generous act, an example, quantity, and generous of spirit. Being generous with money, time, or effort. Uh, the word generosity comes from the Latin word generosus, which means generous or noble birth. Generosity is considered a virtue in many religions, philosophies, and is often celebrated in religious and cultural ceremonies. And this is what uh, really got me right here. Biologically, uh, research suggests that humans are born with a biologi biological ability to be generous and thanks and thankful. So it is natural for us. We are born with this, with the, this spirit of generosity. Uh, Rather, we gave our time or or, or, or effort or, or talents. Um, Jesus Christ, you know, was very generous for giving his life for us. And, and uh, God himself is always generous. I mean, for example, when I'm up on stage, uh, one of the gifts that, one of the things that God gives me and, it's, and I'm able to see is what he sees. I see a little bit of what, what God sees whenever I'm up there. I see hands raised, uh, people worshiping, people praying, people crying, and I see people laughing when I'm up on stage. It is, it is, a, it is a blessing to be up there and be able to see Amen. what God sees, even if it's just for a little bit. It's a, it's, it really is a, it is a blessing, and that is what God has given me uh, over time. And, and also with my church time here, all a single one of you have, uh, you know, we've done outreaches, you know, in time, and uh, we did the outreach uh, for Halloween, not Halloween, for the Harvest Fest. Yeah. We had a Harvest Fest, and uh, we did, we saw the community so much that, that it touched a lot of people that this morning, this lady came here at 9 a.m. and that uh, was sliding a, an envelope through the doors uh, that they were locked, the doors were locked. So she was sliding the, uh, the envelope right through the door, so I went over there and greeted her, and, uh, and she said that, uh, is this the church that they had the harvest fest for, for the kiddos. And I said, yes, this was the church. And she said that she was so thankful and so blessed and touched to, to have a, a community to be able to do that. And uh, in, in that note was a, a gift for a pastor, which I don't know what it read, but just on the, on the top it said, Pastor Mario and, and uh, something. And uh, she, what she said was that she was so blessed and so honored and so touched to have been able to be part of that harvest fest. And this was months, you know, about a month before uh, we did the serve us, serve, serve on wheels, you know. It's, so it's why y'all do with y'all's time and y'all's talents and your abilities that really keep this church going. It really keeps, you know, keeps us the spirits high and, and everything. So, and then yesterday, for example, it was beautiful to see when uh, well, Brother Bob and, uh, and Pastor Mario and I, we went out to the apartments. So we had an ice chest full of plates and, and desserts and so forth. And uh, as I'm driving into the parking lot, whenever I see a, a little red wagon on the by the dumpster, you know, and it's just there sitting, you know, drop by it, whatever. And then Pastor Mario gets off, and he, he and Bob go and deliver uh, two plates that are just right around the corner. So they're walking. So I'm getting in the back, and I open the trunk, and I the ice chest, I'm like, oh man, I gotta carry this. Boom. <laughs> so I so I rub over there. I didn't rub. So I walk over there and, like that, and I come back with a little broken red wagon with a little wheel going. You know, but it managed to work. God gave us this little red wheel wagon, you know, to put the ashes on there. And and Bob, brother Bob, went, I wish I would have seen the pictures so you could see that. But Bob is carrying a uh, you know that the wagon. He's pulling it along. He's of course he's sleeping because of his leg. So he's sleeping with a little wagon and he's delivering plates to, uh, to the people. And uh, we knock on one of the doors and uh, nobody answers. Nobody answers at the first door that we, that, that we answer. But his neighbor answered the door because they heard the knock. And uh, what well, just happened that we had two plates that couldn't get delivered because they weren't there. So we offered them those two plates and so forth. We, we prayed and we were, we were praying for those, for those two kids, those two uh, adults. And it was a blessing, it was amazing to see what, you know, what God did there. Um, you know, it was meant for somebody, but in reality, our intentions with, God's intentions with not for them, it was for the neighbor, yeah. to be able to see God's, uh, God's love and God's touch. Amen. You know, so that's, that was an amazing thing to see, you know, miracles do happen, you know. 
Amen. And, um, you know, tithing, you know, tithing is a big part of, uh, of what we do. Uh, I always tell my wife, the actress, you know, we're always going to tithe, we're always going to serve, we're going to praise God. No matter what happens in any in situation, we are always going to do that. Tithe, praise, and, and serve. Amen. But that is what, what we build our foundation on, and uh, it's, it's blessed us so much to be able to do that. Because uh, I remember we were trying to get a house, uh, me and my wife, trying to look for a house, you know, trying to get a house in a, our credit was not, not what it was supposed to be, nowhere near to what it was supposed to be. So they said, you gotta have a credit score of uh, whatever. So okay. I said, okay, well, let's go and try to fix our credit. So we go to this place, this uh, rent center or whatever, we, we get a, a bedroom set, a bedroom set, or a big old couch that I want a recliner. Got a recliner. <laughs> so um, we start paying on it, whatever, and uh, when it turns out that these places, they don't report to the credit bureau. <laughs> but they do give you bad credit if you don't pay it on time. <laughs> so all of my efforts on doing so was like, oh, it was for nothing because you know, we're trying to build our credit for, for a house and well, we just see a long, we see the long of the house far, far away. And we couldn't even uh, reach it, you know, but we rented a house from, uh, from this, from this uh, couple. You know, we were there for about a year, almost two years. And uh, towards the end of the, the two years, uh, turns out that they had another house that they owned down the street, a couple of blocks away from us. And they offered it to us. They go, well, you want to buy this one? And we went to go look at it, my wife and I, and uh, we saw where we walked in there, and it was, it had been abandoned for years, the house. It needed a lot of work. It, uh, it needed uh, uh, some TLC. But uh, we, uh, it was offered to us. It was a big house for all the family, you know, nice big yard and everything. And of course, it, it was a bad where it had rats and it had raccoons and it had birds <laughs> in, the attic, in the attic, in the chimney, actually. So um, it, it took a while for us to get it up and running for us to live in there, but we did. And uh, next came the task of getting rid of the birds in the, in the chimney. So uh, they were there, you could hear them in there in the chimney flying because the, the thing on top was, was wide open. You know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't closed. So I went to Home Depot and I bought myself a uh, bought our, our, our the thing to close up with cut. But uh, we closed it, but the task was for me to see their schedule, the bird schedule. So I look at the schedule, see when the birds left to go feed and when they came back. And it took about a week, almost two, two three weeks before I was able to see just the birds flying out of the chimney and then flying back. Okay, so I was like, well, next time when I see them flying, I'm gonna run up to the, to the roof and, and cover the thing. So when I saw that, I went up there and I put it out, I put the cover of the chimney and uh, sure enough, those birds were flying around, going crazy, trying to find their home. <laughs> I kicked them out. It's okay, they, they, they're getting free food and because I feed the dog and they come. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was, you know, but through the whole time, we were always tithing and serving and, you know, praising God through the whole thing. So. God does, God is faithful. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Yes. You just gotta be obedient and just move forward and just put God first and everything. You will see God's hand in everything. Yes, amen. 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 chapter 9 verses 12 through 15. The service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of this service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for their obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ, and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable, indescribable gift. Amen. Amen. What this passage means to me is that God is a reflect, giving is a reflection of God's power. For God so loved the world that he gave his most precious gift, his son. As a child of God, I believe it is important to follow in the footsteps of the Lord. In doing so, I have been blessed with many opportunities such as visiting the senior home, providing things for meals, and helping those in need throughout my daily life. This makes me proud to be a follower of Jesus. Giving back and receiving a smile is a reward itself. With the recognition of Christ Jesus by my side, 
I know I am blessed with an incredible mother, amazing grandparents, and a wonderful church community living faith. Amen. proud of you guys. I know you studied and um, you took time, you prayed, you could feel it. And Rick, you know, I'm going to just uh, thank God, you know, giving comes back. And, uh, you know, Mary told us the story about Jesus and the feeding of the 5,000. And I remember you took credit for it when you walked in. <laughs> I, I said, hey, Mary, you know what he told me? He told me that there was 5,000 and there was leftovers. And then Mary said, you know, I told him that. <laughs> you know, like Rick and Mark, thank you. Um, the, the continue, just to continue, uh, it, it charged my heart that we would continue in the grace of giving, right? Amen. And thank God that love is what we do as living faith. It's action, so I'll remember that. Leonard, thank God that God has a plan from the beginning to the end. And I, I learned a new phrase, Leonard. It's called, he's an even out God. He's going to even it out because he's yes. preaching it. Uh, our building's a witness. Isn't that incredible? And I hadn't heard that in a while. So, my, Jerry, man, you, you know, you, you told me the probably the hardest one. I, I, I have, I love Irma like Jesus loves the church. Amen. 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 And so that spoke to me. I wrote, Alex, thank God for your, uh, your, your witness and the way you preach and your reputation when we walk out of living faith. Amen. Uh, I'm going to have to do that now. Thanks, thanks, Alex. <laughs> and we give to God. We give first fruits. Be a fountain, not a drain. God is faithful, and I need more grace. And brother, Amen. I do with you. And Michael, uh, you're 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 so detailed. I love everything that you do, and I look at your life. He brought in the not to embarrass him, the best coolers, warmers. Uh, they were from you, you know Union Pacific, but they were immaculate. They were like brand new. But that that's Michael. He has that spirit Amen. of excellence on him. And I, I would have never known that, not unless we had relationship. But your tithe, your tithe can feed five thousand. What can my tithe do if it fed five thousand back in Bible days? What can it do now? And, and all the details. You're a detailed man. All the details that people know. You wrote down everything, and you remembered everything about those precious people that you prayed for, and how God doesn't forget, man. Amen. Good, good stuff. One, I'm not going to forget the Lion King. I'm going to go. Ahead and say <laughs> But the little red wagon, um, you know that I, I took the little red wagon home just to kind of work on it maybe and thinking I was going to, but that thing's fixed. Yes. And I think they just put it by the dumpster and we took somebody's red wagon. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'll always remember, Juan, from your words, always give, just like you told your family, always praise. always serve. And we're going to do that no matter what. Amen. And Irma and I are going to join you and your family in that. And then Aiden, um, we get, we're going to follow Jesus, the footsteps of Jesus, Amen. and we're graced to do that, and I'm grateful for you. Uh, you read that with excellence. The, the note that Juan talked about was this yellow envelope, and he talked about, so y'all don't think, man, he's going to get to go out to eat. I, I received something better. Um, I received a beautiful photograph of grandchildren with Felix that drove the tractor. Aww. And she wrote this, like you said, months ago. She wrote this, but she came in because she remember her kind of uh, living faith. I'd like to thank you and your wife, um, which meant Irma and I, uh, and the staff and the leaders that organized the harvest, the Happy Fall Fest. Walking around was a feeling of peace. Isn't that true? The property that we have. There's always something beautiful that you do for the community. Thank you for the food, the gifts, the rides. Uh, God bless you all. And she gave her email. And then she said, my grandchildren love them. Loved it, and uh, beautiful grandchildren there that got to ride again, and we're blessed right today. Uh, we received last night a note uh, uh, from uh, the lieutenant captain uh, of the Bear County Sheriff's Department. I don't think Joe's with us today, but they delivered plates there, and um, he just wrote this awesome note to us about giving, and we were able to, I think, do 50 plates that we gave to the sheriff. He said, you know, so many times my officers are having to go through getting fast food and not going through a, a convenience store and getting something just real quick, but y'all fed them a hearty, good, warm meal because Amen. of your love. Amen. You did that. All of y'all were able to participate in that. <laughs> so, the community is 
thankful for Living Faith Church, right? Yes. Yes. So thank the Lord. I'm going to end this by doing just the, the worship team's going to come up and we're going to end in the song. But we want to give because that's our response to a giving God. And Lucy's going to come up and conclude in our giving. And just she's going to testify and be a blessing to us, right? Give Lucy a big hand. Good morning, everyone. I am trying to hurry. Um, so first of all, I just want to say that God is our provider, He's our comforter, and He's our counselor, and He is faithful. Um, right now, during this time, we, you know, a lot of people are praying and asking God, I need you right now. I'm lacking right now, Lord. I don't know how I'm going to make it another day because I'm suffering emotionally, mentally, financially. And then, there we were yesterday, and we had the opportunity to meet those people at the front door. God uses people. When we pray prayers like that, like, God, save me, he uses people like us, living faith, the red, I mean, sorry, the orange army to go out there. And um, I was on the team with Mike, and I was um, able to um, be on, on the prayer team with them to pray for the people. And yes, we did open, this woman had opened the door, and she was like, my granddaughter told me you were going to come and deliver me food. And she's like, why? Why are they coming? Why? And she was like, well, because they're giving to the elderly. And uh, I'm glad she opened the door because she had just lost her mom. And her mom was suffering through dementia. And she was not going to do anything for Thanksgiving this year. She didn't want to celebrate. She moved far away from her family. She was going to go to the valley. But we showed up. And we were there to tell her, you know, God is with you. He is your comforter. And he loves you. Come a living faith because we want to walk alongside of you during this time of grief. Um, and God is, he loves you. He, you are a child of God. Yes, you lost your mom, but this is just, there's another beginning for you. And we were there to speak that life into her. Another one, like Mike said, um, we had to knock on some doors and people were not answering, but Mike got smart. <laughs> At the very end, um, he was like, this one was like a lot, a lot, five um, five plates, we had like a system going, everyone had the plate where we're gonna go and deliver, but Mike was like, wait, everyone just stay at the car, let me knock to see if they're there, because people were not answering. And he was like, he's not gonna, like, I'm not gonna answer. And he was like, I hear footsteps, like, we heard footsteps at that house, but they're not answering. And this man comes out, and he looks exhausted. And he was like, he, um, we haven't slept, my newborn, he's sick. Um, and he was just so grateful that we were there to deliver meals, because I remember we had Emiliano, like, we're exhausted, we don't want to cook, we don't want to drive, so it was a blessing, we're a blessing to their um, family, we're able to pray for them, another family, I know we're short on time, sorry, so another family um, was, uh, they were lacking job, they wanted any money for work, and then how so we pray for them, it was a Fernandez family, but here we are, giving them meals, and it's one less thing that they have to worry about. We provide them with, but we're not only giving them bread, manna, live food, but we're giving them Jesus. We are the kind of Jesus. So yesterday was just amazing, incredible. Thank you from everybody who cooked, donated, gave their time, everything. Like we were truly Jesus on the streets in the neighborhood of Marbach. And God is doing something incredible. And I, I tell Pastor, like, I have such a privilege just to serve alongside all of these amazing 50 people yesterday and people who donated. And it was just amazing in the prayer. But I don't want to take too long. I know it's, we've been here a long time. Um, but, um, sorry. So my testimony about faith, a tithing. Um, I've always learned tithing from Lisa and Alex Copeland when I was 12 years old, had a tithe. I was taught that, so I got my first job, I started tithing 17. Um, and uh, as you know, recently, I'm uh, Shemaine and Oscar were not together, and so I had to go into one and come home. I'm like, Lord, how am I going to do this? Have a mortgage, car payment. Uh, me and Oscar co parent to Emiliano, like, and it was hard. Um, and so I got an emotional, yes, I'm pregnant, but. I'll come back to that too. I'm more than the Holy Spirit or because I mean, I'm pregnant. But um, anyways, so um, I, I, the church leader is like, Lucy, um, there is something. He was like, it's, it's okay if you don't tithe. Pay your light bill, pay your car. 
but you know, I have to type. I have to type. Um, and thank God I did. I never stopped. And God uses people. God bless me with an amazing mom, sister, church, family. Money came in. My people, my my mom, you pay my life bill one month. And just God provided that entire year. And God is so faithful. Last story, I'm sorry. Um, I had a gas leak at my house right after Christmas, right after my mom's birthday. I'm broke. And um, CPS comes, I'm like, your, your gas is leaking. You need to get out of this house right now with your son working from home. My mom's home with my son. And he's like, a part of them said $1,000, so not telling you, not telling me how much the labor is going to be. And I'm looking at the CPS, man, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I don't have $2,000. Like, how, what am I going to do? And he was like, hold on. I think I have the part in my car, in my truck, because I collect parts for, for older people and people like you. I'm like, well, like me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, he comes, and the part fits. And he did the labor like in 30 minutes. And that's all God. Amen. And I have the money or the resources. My light bill, my mortgage, my pay car payments have been paid. And um, I've been blessed with my amazing church family who's and my family who's been with me this whole year. Tithing works. And I've shared with y'all how God has been faithful. And Pastor Martin's been preaching how even tithing men's relationships. Y'all know that. Me and Austin were not together. I didn't even want to look at him or text him last year. But here we are. God is restoring a marriage. Are we perfect? No. Yeah. God is healing? Yes. And we'll be having our baby girl in May. Oh, wow. And so God does men relationships. Tiny works. God has been faithful for me. And so like Leonard said, that was a good service that um, there's going to be times in your life when you're going to have plenty and you give. And I love to give. And there's going to be times when you don't have enough, but you're surrounded with faithful people that are able to provide for you Amen. Um, when you don't have enough. So, um, I need, can I have, um, be, um, be your mother-in-law come up here? Juan's mom. I'm sorry, what's your mom's name? Margarita. 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 Okay. I'm, uh, going to have Margarita. Margarita. <laughs> So, um, we need to learn Spanish, so be faith, and I'm really bad, but I did, I asked her if she can translate for me that God is our provider, our comforter, our counselor, and faithful. Can you say that in Spanish? Dios va a ensanchar su territorio. Dios lo está preparando. Amen. Porque Él va a ensanchar su territorio. Porque para Él no hay límites. Dios es un Dios poderoso y a Él estamos sirviendo. God is limitless, limitless, and He is a God of abundance. Amen. So um, if you have your tithe, and it's hard for you to tithe right now, I've been there. Join us in praying for the tithe that it goes further than we yes. could ever imagine. Yes. Amen. So, Father God, thank you just so much for giving us the ability just to give back to you, Father. Um, we pray that you just pray a special blessing upon those who give towards the storehouse, Father. That we don't give to this church, but we give through this church to your, to the community, to the loved ones of Marbach Road here in San Antonio, across the world, we're saving babies, Father. But I pray a special blessing upon their finances, their health, their family, protection, favor, guidance, wisdom, that you're with each and every single one of us, Father, and that this um, tithe goes further than we can ever imagine, Father. 
thank you for loving us and forgiving us and just your faithfulness in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We never want to uh, leave this place without giving an opportunity to give your lives to God. And if you find yourself in a situation where uh, you, you see that you need grace, you need mercy, you need your, your sins to be forgiven, this is the place to be. This is a great family. We will back you 100%. If, you, if this is something that you, you feel like God is calling you at this point, this is a perfect time. If you'll, I'll ask everybody to go ahead and close your eyes, if you would. And if, if you want to give your heart to God, He is waiting, He's ready, He's willing. If you'll raise your hands, I will pray with you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful today for the opportunity to come to you in prayer. Any time, any place, but specifically today, because this is the day that you have made. Lord, we're thankful that the house is restored. And Lord, if there's someone here that is afraid to raise their hands, Lord, you know the depths of their heart. Lord, I ask that you continue to work on them. Show them who you are. Lord, and, and, and Lord, will forever give you honor, glory, and praise for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.